I see now that the circumstances... Yeah, we all know the quote. We're breaking down Mewtwo this week, who made its first appearance in Pokemon Red and Green for the Game Boy in 1996. Mewtwo is the first legendary Pokemon to have a mega evolution. Despite its name, Mewtwo does not evolve from Mew, but was made from its DNA. And in the Pokemon Handbook, Mewtwo is described as a ferocious feline. What's up, YouTube? I'm Choctopus, and this week we're breaking down the original legendary Pokemon Mewtwo. Yeah, yeah, I know, the legendary birds, but come on now. Mewtwo is a very mobile fighter with a strong aerial game, and he excels in a bait and punish style, and should definitely not be underestimated. Now be sure to vote down in the comment section for the character you want to see in next week's breakdown, and let's get started. Mewtwo only has a Jab 1, which leads into a Rapid Jab, which is a good damage builder. Now, despite Jab 1 coming out on frame 6, even though it feels like it hits way quicker, can be used for jab locking your opponent on a tech chase. So if you land a hard knockdown on your opponent, you can use Jab to lock them. Now, as for Rapid Jab, it can be done by either holding or repeatedly hitting A, and it's a good damage builder. Now, if they fall out of it, they can punish you, but the last attack does have good knockback. Dash Attack has good range, and it can be used to punish bad landings and whiffed attacks. It launches a good angle so you can follow up with either a neutral air or a forward air. The attack can also be used as a kill option at high percents, but it also has multiple hitboxes. So if you hit later, it's a stronger attack, whereas if you hit earlier, it doesn't deal as much damage. Next up, we have Mewtwo's Smash Attack, starting with F-Smash, which is an incredibly strong attack and can kill as early as 65% depending on the weight of the character and where they are on the stage. However, it is also extremely slow, and if whipped, the punishment can be dealt right back. You can also angle it upward or downward, which is useful for hitting those smaller characters. The attack also has a sour spot, which is around Mewtwo's arms. But this attack is most damaging if you manage to catch them with the blast. It's best used if you land a disable or a shield break, but it's not something you want to go around spamming. Down Smash is the highest knockback scaling attack out of Mewtwo's entire kit. Now, despite it being so powerful, it doesn't hit on both sides like most Down Smashes. However, it can be used to two-frame an opponent as they grab the ledge, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with the terminology, two-framing is hitting an opponent in the short two frames that they are vulnerable when grabbing the ledge. The attack is also a lot safer on shield than his F Smash, and could also serve as a good punish tool after a disable or a broken shield. Up Smash is an overhead blast that works well as an anti-air because of the large disjoint between Mewtwo and the actual attack. At kill percents, this can be comboed out of a fast falling nair, but you have to land directly on top of your opponent to pull it off. And also, if the attack hits from the side, Mewtwo will pull its opponent overhead. Now, be careful when using it because it does have a long lasting hitbox, but it also has the most end lag out of all of Mewtwo's smash attacks. Mewtwo's neutral B is Shadow Ball. Charging it will increase damage and knockback, and like most chargeable projectiles, you can cancel it mid-charge by moving, spot dodging, jumping, or shielding. This is one of your best attacks in neutral because it can set up for a variety of combos, and it doesn't even have to be fully charged either. Shadow Ball will travel slow enough where Mewtwo can run behind it to follow up with a variety of attacks, from a dash attack to any of the tilts. This is primarily because regardless of your opponent's damage, a small Shadow Ball will keep your opponent grounded. At kill percents, a small Shadow Ball to a dash attack works well. And then at lower percents, you can dash down tilt and follow up with a fair. Again, Shadow Ball is overall a great attack because you can also use it to bait and punish a shield. So if you have a fully charged Shadow Ball that you're holding on to, you can throw it out, your opponent will shield it, and then you can dash up, and then you can either grab them, or if they drop shield, you can follow up with a tilt. Side B is Confusion, which is a command grab that has no direct follow-up. However, it can be used to reflect projectiles, which makes it good against campier characters. Down B is Disable. If both you and your opponent are grounded, they'll be stunned for a while, and then you can follow up with a smash attack or virtually anything else. So if they're at a kill percent, they can say goodbye to one of their stocks. It's definitely difficult to land, and it doesn't have many setups, but... Being that Disable is technically a projectile, it can be reflected back at Mewtwo, so be careful. Uppy is Mewtwo's Teleport, which is also his recovery, and when using the move, you're completely invulnerable. It travels a long distance, which in combination with Mewtwo's floaty jumps and his strong aerials, make him a good character to chase off the stage. If you teleport to the ground, there's considerably less end lag, but if used in the air, Mewtwo will fall into a state of helplessness. Mewtwo's tilts are some of his better attacks, and they're going to be essential to his combo game. 
F-Tilt doesn't combo, but you can use it to set up into a tech chase situation, and it also knocks down at zero, so you can set up a tech chase right off the bat. You can also angle the attack slightly upward or downward. Down Tilt is your best combo starter, and another attack you're going to be using a lot in neutral because it has good range. The closer Mewtwo is to opponent, the more damage he's going to do, and the easier it is to combo. So just be aware that Mewtwo's Down Tilt has a tipper hitbox, which is weaker, and doesn't combo as well. At low percents, you can do down tilt right into an up tilt to start a juggle. You can even do it into a fair. And while it's not a true combo, you can down tilt into a short hop nair to mix your opponents up. At mid percents, you can down tilt straight into an up air, and you can even do it into a double jumping double up air, or replace the second one with a fair. Also, down tilt, if landed by the edge, could lead into a down air which will spike your opponent. Up tilt is another great attack that starts combos, and you can use it to start juggles, or into up airs, and you could begin to juggle like a clown. It works well as an anti-air, and on battlefield stages or other stages with low platforms, Mewtwo's tail will reach over the platform and cover a majority of it, so if your opponent is right above you, you can use up tilt a lot to cover the platforms. And then we have Mewtwo's aerial attacks, and this is where Mewtwo is the strongest. Nair hits multiple times, with the last hit being the strong one that knocks away. You can use this to mix your opponent up and build damage. You can also use Nair as a drag down if you fast fall within the last two hits. And like mentioned earlier, Nair can pop into an up smash, but you have to land directly on your opponent with a weaker hit. Then we have Mewtwo's Fair, which is this forward swipe, and this is one of Mewtwo's best kill moves. It's also one of his fastest aerial attacks that comes out on frame 7, and it combos virtually at any percent. So at low percents, you can down tilt into a fair, and that's probably going to be your most commonly used combo. You can do a falling nair into a fair if you auto cancel it. And at higher percents, if you slightly charge a shadow ball, just like a dash attack, you can follow up with a fair. Back air has great range, and it's one of Mewtwo's best tools for ledge guarding. And because Mewtwo's so floaty, you can use multiple of these off the stage. Now the reason why Mewtwo excels at ledge guarding is because he's so floaty, you can use multiple aerial attacks without having to worry about recovering. So if your opponent gets knocked off the stage, use those back airs and try and ledge guard as much as you can. As for combos, you can up tilt which will follow up into a back air. Down air is this downward blast that has a little bit of startup, but if hit with the sweet spot, it'll spike your opponent. Now as I mentioned earlier, at the end of the stage you can hit a down tilt and then follow up with a down air. Then we have the up air, which is this overhead tail swing. It has big range, and it's a great tool for juggling your opponent. At mid percents, it starts comboing at a down tilt. Now, the cool thing about it is you can chase your opponent with a double jump into a double up air by buffering after a down tilt. What the hell am I talking about? Well, it's not a true combo, but you can do down tilt, double jump, and then you can follow up with two up airs. You could also replace the second up air with a fair, and it'll actually true combo. Now, as for Mewtwo's extended strings and mix-ups, a lot of his combos aren't completely true, but his tilts and his aerial attacks are so versatile that you can just mix up in various different ways. So you can do tilt into a fair, into an up tilt, into a neutral air, into a chase forward tilt. You can down tilt, up tilt, back air. You can do nair, up tilt, forward air. You can do down tilt, nair, drag down, down tilt, fair. You can do down tilt, up tilt, up air. You could do Nair up air. Honestly, just play around with things, see what works for you, but there's so many different combinations that it'd be impossible to go through every single one of them. And finally, we have Mewtwo's throws. His forward throw is the most damaging, and other than obtaining stage control, there's really no other uses for it. Then we have back throw, and this is going to be your most used throw, and it's also the most useful, because if you grab your opponent at the end of the stage, you throw him off, then you can begin using back airs to ledge guard, because that's what Mewtwo's best at. Now, situationally, if your opponent decides they want to use air dodge and air dodge the back air after you toss them off the stage, what you can do is you throw them off, you go for the back air, they air dodge, chase them down with a down air because Mewtwo has such a great jump and recovery, you might catch them with the spike. Then we have up throw, which is decently strong and can kill pretty early, but it'll also put your opponent above you to start juggling. And then lastly, we have the down throw, which pops your opponent right in front of you. However, it has so much end lag that it won't true combo into anything. However, what you can do is you can bait them by doing a down throw and wait for them to either air dodge or DI, and then you can punish them afterwards. So that's it for Mewtwo's breakdown. Honestly, I think Mewtwo is greatly underappreciated and has a lot to offer with his strong aerial game and an interesting kit to use in neutral. 
Now, just a reminder, don't be afraid to chase your opponents off the stage because Mewtwo has a great recovery, and when playing him, you really want to use your kit to react to what your opponents are doing, hence the bait and punish playstyle. If you liked this video, don't be shy. Leave a like. Please, my family is starving. Subscribe if you're new. Consider becoming a member for as little as 99 cents a month by clicking the join button on my channel. Uh, with this, you can influence future content, and there's some other great perks there as well. There's also links to other platforms I'm on in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.